most runners want to start off running way too fast. They have this agenda that they think that they need to actually complete. And I'm going to tell you, it's further from the truth because we, for our life insurance, and she did it old school. She did it, she tested it a couple of ways and it was six beats lower than what my heart rate monitor on my watch was telling me. Six beats and she did it three times. Just know that technology A few about things that you can be doing if you're just thinking about starting this whole math the tone training then we're gonna start right now I've been feeling so small watch the clock ticking off the wall but tonight I'm letting it go spend my for sure I'm gonna be myself or I could be someone else no one stopping me now I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes I just wanna feel alive it's just what I do when I'm out so try not to hold me down feel alive when I'm in this town Stars. I wanna drive a faster car Nothing can break me No, no, nothing can break me Try not to hold me down Feel alive when I'm in this town Look at the beautiful stars I wanna take a trip to Mars Nothing can break me No, no, nothing can break me Drive a faster car Lay my troubles to rest Blow the smoke through my cigarette City lights looking fine And I know this is my time now I'm gonna be myself Or I could be someone else No one's stopping me now I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes I feel alive It's just what I do when I'm out So try not to hold me down Feel alive when I'm in this town Look at those beautiful stars I wanna drive a faster car Nothing can break me No, no, nothing can break me So if you're anything like me and you're thinking about starting off on your Maffetone journey I would suggest a few things to kind of help the beginning stages. Number one, make a commitment for at least three months. At least three. If you actually want to see some success, three months I would say the bare minimum. Number two, pick a time of the year where you don't have anything else going on. That way you can focus all your time and energy when it comes to running on this one simple thing, and that's running slow. Sometimes you just have to get I'm just a crazy guy talking to my GoPro, it's okay. <laughs> Used to people looking at you funny while you talk to your phone or you talk to your GoPro as you run by. You get some really weird looks, I'll tell you that. Something else that I would say is very, very helpful and that is to keep a training log as to how you're doing. Now, I know that Strava is really good at this. You can see all your runs. You can put down how you did and all that. However, I find that if I can chart it, put it into a spreadsheet, looking at the graphs, 
it makes all the difference. I can really see what my training looks like. And so you can try doing the exact same thing. Put it in a chart, you know, you can look at it. Don't obsess about it, but you can just kind of look at it and you can kind of see how you're progressing. Your expectation really during this whole entire thing should be just having patience. It takes a while to build up your aerobic base. So by putting in the time, putting in the effort, putting in the consistency, these are things of recipe of success. So not having a timeline per se as the, you know, I wanna be running this fast in this many months. It doesn't work that way. Like I said, it takes time and patience. If you can't commit to running this way, I wouldn't start, honestly, because you're gonna have so many issues trying to keep yourself motivated to run. Find a really nice place to run because if you enjoy the outdoors, you're more likely to continue running and if you didn't so sometimes you have to figure that out mixing it up as much as you can sometimes you may have to drive to a particular area buy a good quality heart rate monitor that you think may be fun go explore a certain area it may be one to start off just on your wrist it could be a strap that pairs with your watch Whatever it is, get something that is in your budget that actually you find is gonna work for you. Buy a good quality watch that's reliable that you're gonna have for a long term. Some examples, you can get the Pace 2 from Koros. It's the lightest and cheapest watch on the market right now, I believe. Make sure you get a good fitting pair of shoes. Those are certainly gonna help, especially when you start going longer distances. So maybe go into one of your local running stores, get them to check out your running gait. That's basically your form, how, how you land on the ground. Do you pronate, supinate, are you neutral? And if you don't know what any of those things are, just Google it. There's all kinds of videos online. Convey to your spouse, your significant other, or your friends and family as to what you're gonna be embarking on. Because they may not understand. And so, by letting them know, you can ask them to keep you accountable. Or, they may understand why you're doing this and be a little bit more accommodating to set up what time dinner is or who's looking after the kids in the morning, how long you plan on running for on the weekend, on your long run. These are things that are important. So that way it stops any arguments from, from arising from your running. You may have to change your diet. because you may be running all these miles, but yet you're eating junk food. And that's not a good combination because you can never outrun a bad diet at all. It's just not gonna happen, especially when you get older. Maybe a little bit easier if you're younger. But when you're older, <laughs> fat chance that's gonna happen. Make sure you get the big yellow book for endurance athletes by Phil Maffetone. It's a fantastic book that actually walks you through everything that you, can, you need to know. For people who are plant powered, people who are vegetarians or vegan, who don't eat meat, you may be looking at this going, how do I plan on running this way. Well, I look at it this way. Eat your vegetables, nuts and seeds, 
I like eating lots of avocados. They really are fantastic for you. High fat, low carb as much as possible, even though you're, you're vegan. You can still do it. However, I don't freak out when it comes to carbohydrates, as long as they're coming from vegetables. Ditch the pastas and breads, muffins and bagels, cereals. Something else that I would suggest, don't be so militant about your heart rate. If it goes up a couple of beats higher, don't freak out. It's okay. You can always start walking like this. Every time that I'm filming, my heart rate goes up. And right now, I'm training to run an ultra marathon. And running slow is the name of the game for me because I just want to finish. So sometimes you have to walk, bring the heart rate down a bit, so that way that you can continue again. Take 180, minus your age, and that's where you should run. Now, if you've been running for a number of years, you haven't had any injuries, you're not on any medications, stuff like that, he allows you to go ahead and add five beats. But here's the thing, if you are relying on a watch or if you have a strap, you may want to have to do some tests to see how accurate it is. Because I had a nurse come to my house because we for our life insurance and she did it old school. She did it, she tested it a couple of ways and it was six beats lower than what my heart rate monitor on my watch was telling me. Six beats and she did it three times. So just know that technology isn't always the answer. And so if you see the numbers start to rise, you may have to ask yourself the question, what would it be if I just tested it old school and put your fingers on your pulse and have a stopwatch and count and then figure out how many beats a minute you're actually beating compared to what your heart rate monitor is telling you right at that moment. That was an eye opener for me. So that's why I don't freak out. If I see the numbers going up, it's like, okay, I understand, whatever. But also just know that you may actually be running lower than what your zone is. So 180 minus your age, add five beats if need be. And then your 10 beat zone range, right? So you could be training between 140 and 130 or 137 and 127, whatever it is. The higher you train in that zone, the more consistent you are at it. And the longer that you train that way, you'll see greater results than if you train at the lower spectrum. All right. However, all that being said, it comes down to the one big question and I ask everybody this. Why, why, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Because if your why isn't big enough, you're not going to be able to endure any how. And what I mean by that is the following. If you don't know why you're, why you want to train this way, there's going to be so many reasons why you don't do it. How am I going to do it? How am I going to achieve it? Right? So make sure the why is big enough because when all those questions start popping up, you'll be able to endure it and get through it and make it happen. That's what I found. That's what's worked for me. So sometimes setting a big scary goal, saying you're going to run an ultra marathon, sometimes that pushes you to do things that maybe you didn't think that you could do, but at the end of the day, you really could. So go out and try to find out what that is, because I think you're stronger than what you think you are. And with that, everybody, I wish you well. Happy trails and get out and run.